Oh, how is it already December? I don't know. Yikes. Anyways, let's jump into everything that I read in the month of November. I read 15 books and I'm in the middle of three others right now. So like I got a head start on them, but I didn't get to finish them before it wrapped up. So I'm just going to jump in and let's talk about everything I read in November. So the first book that I read this month was Stay With Me by Nicole Fiorina. Fiorna? I don't know how to pronounce it, but this book was incredible. I loved every single moment of it. It is about Mia and Ollie and Mia is basically her dad's at his wit's end with her and decides to send her away to this like reform school slash kind of like mental health facility in the UK where she meets Ollie and all these other folks and basically starts to unravel the trauma from her past. She does lean for like the first half of the book. She basically feels nothing at all. Like she can't feel any emotion. Nothing. And so it's almost like reading, like she, she almost has like sociopathic tendencies in a way that like she genuinely doesn't feel anything. Like she can just say shit to people and she doesn't feel any remorse. But that is until she gets to the school and she starts unraveling her past and she meets Ollie. And Ollie is on the other end. He feels too much. But, and they're just like explosive together. The mental health rep in this book is great. It does deal with a lot of serious topics. So there are some trigger warnings in this book that I do just want to mention that there is a trigger warning for sexual assault and suicide as well. Just be cautious of those if that's something that might be, um, might be triggering for you. So just want to note that, but this book was just incredible. It's so well done. Me and Ollie were really great and I loved every moment of it. Next up, I read Unravel Me by Tahira Mafi and it is the second book in the Shatter Me series and the first Shatter Me book I liked. This one blew the first one out of the water for me. It was so good. Um, so it, I gave it five out of five stars for this one and I literally cannot wait for Ignite. I'm waiting for it for my library, but honestly like I'm getting impatient and I might just buy it because I want it now. It's following again the characters from the first book, Juliet Warner and Adam, for the most part Kenji too, but my favorite favorite part about this book was Juliet really like coming into her own and her power and getting to learn how to use it and really getting to see what she's made of a bit. I think we haven't seen all that she can do yet though so I'm holding out for the third book on that but we're like getting hints of it and I'm just so excited to see her just like be the badass that she is. The best part about this book is Warner. To me I am so intrigued by his character. I love a villain and anything but I don't think he's the villain. I think it's actually gonna be Adam. Adam is sketchy to me <laughs> and I just I cannot wait for the third book to get more of Warner as well. I just think he's so complicated and so complex and so well written that I'm just really excited to see what is in store for him and Juliet in, this, in the third book. It was just, it's so much fun. It's such great read. And again, the writing style is very different. To Hera Mafi's style is different than from pretty much anything that I've read. So it did take me a moment to get back into that place again when I started reading it again. But it's really interesting and it makes it stand out. So again, I loved it. Then I read Mr. Masters by T.L. Swan and I ended up giving this one like four out of five. Honestly, enjoyment level, it was like a five out of five. I just think that towards the end, there were some things that were a little rushed. It just, I couldn't give it like the five out of five stars. However, it was super enjoyable. It was a lot of fun. It was very light. I wouldn't say it was a quick read. It was fast paced, but it wasn't quick in the way that it's like a pretty thick book. I think it was like, I don't know, it was a decently long book. Um, So it follows this girl who moves to the, is it the UK or is it Australia? I think the UK and she's Australian to be a nanny. And she thinks that she's nannying for this widow lady. And it's actually a man and his two kids. There's a lot, I got a lot of secondhand embarrassment from this book, if I'm being honest. There were quite a few situations that I was like, what? It like did make me cringe a bit. But again, it was all just fun and light. And I did like the romance a lot. I liked the forbidden aspect because if it's not forbidden, like I don't really want it right now. <laughs> the relationship with the kids was really cute. I've never read a nanny romance before. So it was something different. I did like that aspect. I liked both of the kids inclusion. And yeah, it was just fun. It was light, it was entertaining. And 
I liked it. The next five books that I read were all for my Banned Forbidden Taboo book video that I did. It's the last video that I post on this channel. I did a vlog for that. So the first one that I read was Love Unexpected by QB Tyler. So these I'm not going to go super in depth on because you can go check out that video and hear all of my thoughts. But that one I did really enjoy. I think I ended up giving it like three out of five stars. The romance was good. I just felt like it was really rushed at the end and I was wanting more out of the book, but it was fun. And then um, in that same video, I read The Wild by Kay Webster. That one was just not for me. I did like Kay Webster's writing, um, but the story, it just, it wasn't it. I was, it wasn't even just the relationship that was in that book that bothered me. Like, yes, that was part of it. But it was just that like it felt so unrealistic and I just got bored. They were literally like the only two characters for the majority of the book and that did get a little old to me and just being out in the wild I just got kind of I got kind of bored. So I gave it like two out of five on Goodreads but like me myself personally I think I would only give it like a one star but I just really hate giving books one stars especially when I finish them you know. And then um, I read Balance by Lucia Franco. Five out of five. We'll get into that in a moment. And then I read Priest by Sierra Simone. That one was a lot of fun. I gave it three out of five, but it made me think a lot more than I thought it would. While it's super taboo because it was a priest, for me, I'm kind of like, I don't really, I'm not Catholic, so I don't really get, I'm like, why can't you just be married? Like, I don't understand it. It was a good time. And then the last book that I read for that, which I think is going to end up being in my top 10 of the year, is Forbidden by Tabitha Suzuma. This book is heartbreaking. I mean, I got so rambly in that vlog at the end talking about the end of this book. It's like ridiculous, but I left it in because it was just what I felt in that moment and what I still feel now. I have not stopped thinking about this book since I read it. It's so beautiful. It's so heartbreaking. It really did like it really did like emotionally destroy me, but I loved that. It is more on the YA side, even though it is between a brother and a sister. But like I said in that video, it is not icky. Like I think if you are worried about going into it and thinking that it might be similar to the wild and I got like an ick factor in that, I promise you're not gonna get it in this. This book is just, it was incredible, so. That was a really fun, that was a really fun video to do. And I'm glad I did it when I did because since um, I had read Balance, it was banned again off of Amazon, which I don't really get why. I don't think Lucia Franco really gets why because she rewrote them and put them on within the guidelines, but it's now banned again. But I think you can still get books two through five on there, but the first one's banned again. So I think it's similar to The Wild now where you have to like go directly to her website and purchase it. Okay, then, Let's just jump off of balance because when I was reading, when I was making that vlog, I was like, I don't even want to read the rest of these books. I just want to read the rest of the off balance series. So immediately after I was done, I read the rest of them and I just finished Dismount last night, which is the last one. And I'm like, kind of, I don't really feel like reading today. I just kind of want to like sit and mourn the end of that series, as weird as it sounds. So they are balance, execution, release, twist, and dismount. And I am gonna have a reading vlog up for all of those. That'll probably be out like next week. So I'm gonna kind of keep my thoughts limited on here and you can check that out next week. Um, but all I'm gonna say is that I gave every single one of these books five out of five stars. The series consumed me the entire week that I read it. I read Balance for that video, but then I read the last four books in a week and it just like consumed my every waking moment. It was incredible. I loved the gymnastics romance. I loved Rhea and Kova. It was just such a great series. And it honestly makes me really sad for Lucia Franco that it got banned again. When for me, I don't really get why it would have. Like I've read other books on Kindle Unlimited that I'm like, yikes. And Balance was never, and like the Off Balance series never really got that for me. But anyways, I don't know the guidelines. I don't know, I don't make the rules, so whatever. But. I will just say I loved that series and that reading vlog will be up next week. And I had three kind of duds at the end here. Um, I read 56 by Seven Rue. I have read, I think, all but two of Seven Rue's books and they're very hit and miss for me that I'm finding. Birdie, which is Forbidden and Baby Bird, is honestly a hit for me, even though it's like wild as shit. I, I did really like that and Echo is still my favorite and I think it's When October Starts is the other one with Ezra and Juniper. I liked that one a lot too. 
However, I'm just finding now, like, I think she's released all of her books within just this year. And I think you can start to tell, like, the they're just not as good anymore, or at least for me personally, they're not as good. I think they're feeling really rushed. Also, she's making them longer now. They used to be quite short, more like novella length between normally around like 200 pages. And I feel like that was her strong suit, was making them like short, sweet, to the point. 56 was like 300 and something pages and it was just too long for the source material that it was I thought personally I don't I didn't care about the age gap that does not bother me it was more that the characters lacked any depth and there was really no real conflict it was just it was just kind of a flop for me if I'm being honest there wasn't and like the different trigger warnings I was like I don't really care about those either it was fine I mean certain things were not necessarily my jam but it was it was what it was. It was too long of a book for these characters and it was just not, it was just not it. It was a miss and I think I ended up giving it like two out of five. And then I was actually going to include this book in like the banned forbidden taboo vlog but then I was like I think it was getting too long and I just like didn't like this book whatsoever so I didn't really want to include it. Um, so it's Captive in the Dark by CJ Roberts. I didn't like this. It was just too dark for me. There was really nothing that I liked about it. I didn't really like either of the characters. I didn't like the circumstances. I again ended up giving it like two out of five stars on Goodreads, but for like for me personally, I think I would only give it like one out of five stars. I would never reread this. Um, but with that said, CJ Roberts' writing was good. So maybe if she had some other books that weren't like dealing with the subject matter or weren't as dark, I would like it. But this just wasn't really it. Last, I, I swore that I was not going to read anything more by Jade West because I hadn't liked anything by her that I had read before, but then everyone was talking about Sugar Daddies by Jade West and I was like, fine, I'll give it a go. I will say I liked it better. This I liked it better than the other two books that I've read from her. It is my favorite out of the three. With that said, it still was like not my favorite. Um, at least the characters had some more depth to them. That I think was like my issue with 56 was like that the characters were so just like one note and one dimensional. And that was kind of my issue with previous Jade West books where this one, I felt like they had, um, they had some more to them. You know, they weren't just like there to just like fall in love, you know? It was good. Um, it was fun. I think the tone was better in this one. It was a lot lighter and kind of leaned into like more of like a not like a rom-com way but it just it the tone was just better in this book and I liked it more I liked the relationship that went on between the three of them I think I still would only give it like two and a half stars but again I did end up liking it that better than some of her other books and I will say that some of these scenes were like the craziest scenes I've ever read so if that's what you're looking for this book has it Okay, so that was everything that I have read and finished in the month of November, and now we are in the last month of the year, so I'm going to try to meet my reading goal. My original reading goal this year was 52 books. I wanted to read a book a week, and then I surpassed that by like May. So then I was like, let's double that. Let's do 104, and then I've passed that as well. So now I'm trying to triple that. So currently I have read 143 books. So I want to be able to read 156 books by the end of the year. So I think I can do it. So the for sure things that I'm gonna finish reading by the end of 2020 are The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. I am, I'm on, I'm like a little over halfway through. Um, I will say I'm not like loving this. It's fine, but it's not my favorite, if I'm gonna be honest. And then I'm going to read Even When I'm Gone. I'm like 40% of the way through. That is the sequel to Stay With Me by Nicole Fiorna. So I'm for sure gonna finish that. And then I'm just assuming I'm going to finish up. It is a trilogy and the last one is now Open Your Eyes. I'm just assuming I'm gonna finish it because I'm loving it. So I will also finish that as well. And lastly, I am just hoping not hoping, I'm going to make myself finish War Storm by Victoria Aveyard. That's the last book in the Red Queen series and I read the rest of the Red Queen series back in July and I don't know what it is but this last book is dragging for me. Like I have no motivation to read it whatsoever but I do really want to finish it up. So those are my four for sure reads that I will do before the end of 2020. I do have a book club book that I'm currently reading so I'll obviously finish that as well and I'll just see what else I want to read before the end of the year. 
but yeah that is all for november i will be back next month with my december wrap-ups and look for my off balance reading vlog probably next week i'll have that up and then i will also be having a top 10 of 2020 my top 10 reads slash series i'm gonna make it standalones and series that i've read in 2020 so that will be out towards the end of december even though i'm pretty sure i have my list done but i just want to give myself a little extra time in case if i read anything that would bump anything off the list but otherwise i will see you guys in my next video